Another episode of Funky and the Champ. I'm fat. Jamal's like skinny fat. You got you like you. Like you're skinny fat. Take it back. Today I chose violence. I'm suing. <laughs> Sue them. I had to mute on for the fight. Sorry, Daniel. I did mute you. You guys are gonna be lifetime enemies because of the shit you say the moment you get a microphone in your face. Bro, you're crazy. Ben. In case you didn't know, baby, I'm crazy about you. Ben, in case you didn't know, Ben, I'm crazy about you. And I would be lying if I said that I could not, I could live this life without you. I just want you to know that, Ben. Are you practicing? I learned a new for song. A date later tonight or something? I just learned a new song and I immediately thought of you. So I said, Ben, let's get on the <laughs> horn. Let's do a show. Let's do a show. My guy, how you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty well. I figured that was some song from the 90s or something. That's actually what I thought when you started, you know, singing that. No, it's some country song that I just I just started listening to. You listen to country? Billy. Oh, I love country. His name what? is What? No way. His name is Brett Young. His name is Brett Young. It's like I, I love the song. Anyhow. That's awesome. Ben Askren. The reason I'm here today is because my boy is in the news. And why wouldn't he be, right? He's the heavyweight champion in the world. And the heavyweight champion of the world is the news. But he's in the news for something that's very weird. He was doing a podcast the other day, and John Jones was asked about Sergey Pavlovic and Tom Aspinall and those guys. Mm -hmm. He states at his advanced age, he has to weigh the business versus the actual fighting and where he is yeah. in his career. He said Stipe keeps him up at night, but those guys, they're young, they're hungry, but he never really like yeah. expanded on the conversation. So we don't know in regards to what. So my question to you is this, man. Is John Jones just really, really smart? <laughs> because well, think about this. Yeah. When he was beating all when he was beating all of us, we were all in our 30s, and he was the young guy. Yeah. So is he just really smart to not play the game? Well, I mean, a part of it too is I someone posted uh it was a picture of <laughs> John Jones being ranked in 2013. And I think they said he's he maybe the only guy who was ranked in 2013 who's still competing, something to that effect, right? And yeah. I was thinking, you know, okay, wow, he's been around forever. But then um I started thinking like he's missing significant gaps. He has multiple one year, so uh his win versus you versus win over Ovin St. Pru, that was a 15-month gap. He then took roughly the same gap uh, between the time he fought Ovin St. Pru and you again. After that, he takes like an 18-month gap. Um, and then obviously most recently, he took like a three-year gap, right? And Dude, so that's, can you believe that? How many years so is that? so long. I mean, that's 15 plus 15 plus 18. So we're talking 48. That's four years plus three. That's seven years. Of missed time? Of missed time. That's seven years without a fight of those four gaps, right? Um, and so it's like, holy moly, that's so long. So, yeah, 15, 15, 18, and three years. That's that's seven years. And so it's like, oh, man, you know, John could have. <laughs> no. What? Said, no, no. 15, 15, and 18. So he, so let's yeah. just, let's just stop. Let's just stop. Let's count them. Okay. So the first time when I won the belt in 15, was that the first gap? When he got suspended for the car accident, that was the first uh, gap. No, wait, that, that's okay. So the first, no, the first gap. Um, no, oh, he's later stripped the title after he violated the UFC. Yeah, so the first time he beat you in January of January three, 15. 2015, he doesn't fight again for fifteen months until he fights Ovin St. Pru in April of sixteen. Stripped of that title for Comafin and Letrozole. That was when him and I were supposed to fight at UFC two hundred. So how long after so UFC two hundred? He so, came back so and fought me in fought July, right? April of 2016 to July of 2017, yes. Wow. And, and then, then Tur ball, And so then he mm. takes a gap from July 2017 so, to December 2018. So he made his UFC debut in 2009. Yeah. It's 23 now, 14 years. So you're essentially telling me in those 14 years, John Jones has only fought for seven of them. Yeah, really. And you know, and sometimes he was super busy. Like 2011, he he was knocking them out. He fought four times in 2011. Um, and then you know, most recently, like that 2018. So he fought December 29, 2018, and then he fought twice in 19 and early in 20. So four times there, and essentially like a 
16th month period, you know? So yeah, he, he did all of his fighting kind of really close together. And, you know, so it does feel weird because it feels like we've been missing him for a really long time of what, what should have been his prime. That means that heavyweights have been able to hold up for longer. So I would say if John Jones wanted to, he could do whatever the hell he wants. He probably has got three to five good, really good fighting years left. Um, and I was thinking he should make himself the main event. So I was thinking, I was thinking about other really <laughs> prime performers. Like yeah. Mike Tyson. You didn't really care who Mike Tyson was fighting. You just showed up to watch Mike Tyson fight. Yes, right? yes. Is that fair? Yes. Floyd Mayweather. Sometimes he fought bums. He showed up to watch Floyd Mayweather fight. On one fight cards, too. With the UFC, yeah. you'll get like a good cool main event, a good pay-per-view. In boxing, it was one fight on the card, just the main event. Yeah, that's all you were watching. And then, obviously, McGregor would be the yes. our, our UFC example of a – you know, you, you didn't miss a McGregor fight. And I was thinking with McGregor, that one time he fought Diaz. And this McGregor was active in Hurts earlier. He fought Diaz. Diaz was not really a big name. Diaz in his previous fight to the first McGregor fight made 20 and 20. He made 20 and yeah. 20. Think about that. He was, you know, and then he has the after fight speech, which was really popular. Then he fights, <laughs> he beats McGregor. And McGregor actually elevated him, right? So if everybody Jones, he elevates everybody, though. But John could do the same thing. If John, well, was John really did it active, for me. John yes. did it for me. My yes. profile was much bigger after him and I's interactions. And then yes. Steve Miocic was bigger after him and I went through our trilogy. Yes. So it really does kind of follow that same formula where once you fight a guy that's established, your your status yes. kind of grows. But Dude. John Jones could elevate those guys, but why? See, the difference is this, Ben. When we were older fighting Jones, I was 35 the first time I yeah. fought Jones. Mm -hmm. But he was already the man. Rampage was in his 30s when he fought Jones. Shogun yeah. was in his... Uh, Shogun yeah. was young. Well, Shogun was young. So like, like, he was Shogun's somehow, only like... Yeah. Shogun literally is 30 right now. But uh, <laughs> 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 he's had so much damage yeah. from pride that it was different. But Rashad was in his 30s. Rampage was in his 30s. Yes. Uh, everybody... I was in uh, I was in my mid thirties. Everybody was in their thirties until he got to guys like Anthony Smith and Tiago Silva. Yep. I think his yep. name was Tiago Santos and Dom Reyes. Tiago Santos, Reyes, and Jones was kind of like ah, those guys don't get me excited, right? I went from fighting yeah. all these legends to fighting these young guys who really don't really get the juices pumping. But in this one, he says about Aspinall and Sergey, who would absolutely get the juices pumping. He just isn't interested because now he's weighing the business versus yeah. the actual competition. But to me, I feel like John Jones in a headliner, it don't really change much in regards to who he's fighting. He did over yeah. 700,000 buys against Cyril Gaon. He would probably do 700,000 buys against uh, Tom Aspinall. Yep. He'd do 700 that. against Sergey Pavlovic. Yeah. So what is he saying in this instance? He just well, doesn't want to fight those young, hard punching, yeah. hard charging guys. But then isn't it just what he wants to do then? So it's like, well, if John, if you want to fight this one and be done, you had a great career. You're probably the best, if not one of the best of all time. Um, but if what you want to do is fight, then you should fight. Like, if you want to fight, you should be active and fight probably three times a year, maybe four. Well, he won't fight three times a year anymore. He never does. But, you know, I, I, I put those two instances because the one he fought four times in one calendar year, there's going to be fought four times, like 15 months. So, mm -hmm. you know, he has kind of bunched them together. Like, John could put three or four or five together. So, if what you do is you love fighting and you love mixed martial arts, then that's what he should do. And if he doesn't love it anymore and he wants to ride off in the sunset, then he's perfectly well to ride off in the sunset. He's one of the best of all time. Yeah, I just think, like, when I when I hear it to me, I, I the first, my first thought was I laughed. I was like, oh, my God. Like, we all were so excited to fight him. But then yeah. I started to think about it. I was like, it is the difference. He was the man. So in order to get to yeah. where you wanted to go, you had to fight him. He yeah. doesn't have to fight those guys. So he can kind of pick and choose who so he wants you to saying, fight. Danny, are you saying he's going to have take this fight against Stipe and then he's just going to wait for a couple of years till someone? I don't know. I don't. That's the thing. I don't know because okay. I don't know what that quote means. Because yeah. I know that he's not afraid, right? Some yeah, people yeah. will run off the edge and go, oh, he's scared. John Jones is scared of Sergey. Okay. John Jones is scared of... That's not true. He's not yeah. afraid of Sergey Pavlovic, and he's not afraid of Tom Aspinall. But yeah. 
when he said those guys didn't get the juices flowing, those fights were very, very close and competitive. So then he puts at risk everything that I think he values. Yeah. Because for all you might want to say, MMA fans have such a short memory. He loses one real time, then they yeah. start to reevaluate how they judge him and base him in terms of who he is overall. Because if Anderson yeah, Silva could be what he was, and people now don't call him the greatest of all time, it just MMA tells fans, you this is what how I said. You can't worry about legacy. MMA though, fans Daniel, are, dude. If they're so fickle because Anderson Silva. If you remember the stretch he was on, and it was, I'm, I totally agree with you. I think we're on the same page here. But you remember the stretch Anderson Silva was on? I mean, he was the GOAT. And this, after that, nobody was, like, was well, ever going to challenge him for that status. No, he was he was killing people at that point in time. Yeah. But he, he wanted to keep fighting. And that's, you know, sometimes it's like, well, if that's what they want to do, that's what they should do. You know, the sad to me, the sad part is when they have to keep fighting because they need the money. I don't necessarily yeah. think that was the case with Anderson. I think he just wanted to keep fighting and he got older and he wasn't. Well, that's why he still fights now. Anderson. Yeah. Anderson likes to fight, right? It's yes. what he does. It's his identity, and it's what he's known for. But, like, I think Jones could walk away. I'm just really trying to understand the quote, right? Look within the words, because then I question I, I that smart, because he was damn near, he was damn sure fighting us when we were in our mid-30s. And he's, like, yeah. telling these dudes, like, yo, Tom Aspinall, eh. Plus, you also got to deal with the fact that Tom Aspinall and Sergey Pavlovic have not been UFC champions. So those guys are so hungry yeah. to get what you want. It makes it even more difficult. I, 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 I just thought it was a very interesting quote from a guy that I didn't. I you never know with him. You just really yeah. don't know with him. So my question is, do you think he ultimately fights those guys? Uh it's John Jones. So you don't like you're saying you don't know. And you know it's and and he is maybe not totally clear in his intentions sometimes, but I think he should say like, uh, you know, if I, he beats Stipe, I beat Stipe. I'm the greatest of all time. I'm I'm done. I don't really want to fight anymore. I'm gonna go right off into the sunset. And listen, he might do a George St. Pierre and get a wild hair up his butt and said, I want to go fight Michael Bisming for the title three years later or whatever. Well, he you might- know, George St. Pierre only did that because it was Mike holding the title. If Luke Rockhold was still the champion, he wouldn't have fought Luke Rockhold. Never he know. did that because he saw the matchup. I promise you, Chris Weidman or Luke Rockhold as the middleweight champ, I don't think that George You're would go out You're here making accusations. No, I'm serious. I've said this publicly <laughs> before. Ben, let me ask you this, though, before I let you go. Does John beat Stipe Miocic? Uh, I think I would favor him significantly at this point. Um, really? Good in his last fight. Um you know what's crazy is you know obviously he was the light heavyweight. He's definitely going to be bigger than Stipe, no doubt. He's going to be well. Stipe put some weight back on. Stipe got real small when we were fighting. Yeah. He was like two thirty five or two thirty because or I like was that. so fast. John is yeah. not really the fastest. So yeah, I think John just needs to decide what he wants. Uh, you know, does he want to? If he wants to be the fighter, he should just he he could yeah. be he could be like the one that we all watch. Like okay, it's a John Jones fight. Even in wrestling, Daniel, I'm sure I don't know about you, but. There's guys who I love watching wrestle. I'm not going to miss their match. Like, it doesn't really matter who they're wrestling. It doesn't matter who the counterpart is. I'm yeah, gonna, it was Jordan Burroughs. I'm gonna I, but I will on. say this, though. I will say this. I will watch Jordan Burroughs anytime. But when you and Jordan Burroughs wrestled, I was more interested because of you also. Right? But so, I, like, having a great dance partner is yeah. beneficial. Yeah. But I believe that this guy's at a point in his career where he doesn't necessarily need a dance partner. Hey, so... Kobe Covington and Leon Edwards want to fight, but they can't find the fight card right now. Oh, I thought Jones they were on won't let New York 295. Jones, Jones is not going to fight with Kobe Covington. What do you think of that? <laughs> they, they were they, buddies. They went to Iowa Central together. They got history. Bro, I know, but Kobe just talks about him all the time, bad mouths him, yes. and Jones won't fight with him. What do you think oh about that? God. That that that's wild. I want well, I I need to do one more comparison of John Jones. That was okay. thinking, I was just thinking about you know um probably Ali's most famous trilogy. So uh uh when Ali fought Frazier, yeah, right, he had actually missed a whole bunch of time because of the, the Vietnam War thing, which was dumb. But you know, he started as a pro in ni- 1960, and by the time I think the first fight with Frazier was 73, I think, right? So that's 13 years, it's kind of a long time, he's older. And Frazier was the up and comer, you know, now, but he had the belt because Ali was gone. And so, um, but if you think about it, that's 13 years into his fight career. And then the last one, I think, was either 75 or 76 between them. And that is like the, like, literally the most famous trilogy of all time. So it's like, well, you know, if John keeps fighting, 
who knows what, you know, maybe Tom Aspinall becomes this really great fighter and, you know, he beats Jones the first time and then Jones comes back and beats him twice. And that became the really famous trilogy. Like that thing could absolutely happen and really elevate his status even more, even though he doesn't quite. Because how old is yet. Jones? How old is Jones now? 36. 36 years old. So, yeah, he's yeah. getting a little older now. Yes. He's getting a little older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, Ben. I don't know what we got accomplished because you just keep running, talking circles. Like you don't want to. For the first time. I'm I, if, it was, if you're saying, Ben, you get to advise John Jones. Yes. And I, I, I go to him. I said, John, you really like fighting? And he says, yes. I said, well, let's let's do this. Let's knock out three or four fights a year. One of these guys is going to elevate, you know, help elevate you. You're going to elevate them and you're going to become, you already are the greatest, but you're going to be one of the greatest, most famous of all time. And if he says, nah, I like doing other things. I'm saying, good, go knock out Stipe or go finish Stipe, and then move on because you're already one of the greatest of all time. I think it's pretty simple. He just needs to decide. <laughs> he said exactly what you said for the last 15 minutes, just more direct. Like you changed nothing that you said. I thought my answer was good in the first place. I don't need to change it. What's your answer? I, my answer is clear. What's your answer? I, I let me, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. I still don't know what the quote okay. means. I don't know why he doesn't want to really entertain those guys. And I think that to me is what's most interesting. Like why, is John Jones not really interested in these guys? Because, like I said, I know he's not afraid. It has to be something more. Yeah. And I and I don't think more is the economic uh, part of it because I think he'll do pretty good anytime he fights now because of who he is and the status in the game. Ben, once again, my friend, awesome to do the show. We should get do. We've been missing. We missed like two weeks in a row. I've been like so crazy busy, but we'll be back at it next week. And then I'll see y'all in Chicago. I'll go oh, my yeah. guy for PNL. I can't Let's wait. It. It's gonna be fun. Hey, what about that video y'all sent me to Cody Merrill? Said that to Cody Merrill. Your boy was like, Did you send it to him? Bring him out. The, is he coming to PNL? The, the, the dude, your boy's like, Yo, Ben, how in the hell does your boy get beat 11 0 and he want to talk shit? He can't lose 11 0. We're, we're ready to battle, but hold on. <laughs> Number one, it's a folk style match. Number two, that referee let that illegal hold go on. They even watched it on the big screen. <laughs> it was very clearly illegal, and they still gave and they gave him an extra point for the lost challenge. So it should have actually been 2-0 at the end of the first period. But you think that you're better in collegiate? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I think there's a great likelihood of Cole winning in folk style, yes. All right, man. Well, what And I already know. And I, listen, I can't tell you what it is, but I, I picked up during the match on what Cody was doing and why Cole was failing to counter it. So I got he, it now. I know what Cody's doing. Hey, Tell Cody never, we got it. He'll never counter it. He'll never counter it. We will. All right, we'll see. We got it. All right, guys. Hey, until next time. Daniel Cormier, Ben Askren, 